Hello everybody out there in comic book land, my name is George Serrano aka The Don and if you're listening to this, you're only here for one reason and that's a brand new episode of the Major Issues Podcast brought to you by Comic Book Click and as you know, I'm never alone. Sir, introduce yourself. How's it going everybody? It's been a while, huh? It's Yogi here. Yogi is here in studio because we have some unfinished business. That's Dark right. Knight's Metal recently released its final heart-stopping conclusion, issue number six. It took long enough. And with all the tie-ins and all this stuff, we have to catch up and finish out uh, our review, our recap of Dark Knight's Metal. And it, when we left things off, we left things kind of precarious because Batman and Superman were trapped in the dark dimension. We had the rest of the Justice League looking for all the vital metals. And... Uh, we're learning more about Barbat Barbatos. No, I heard someone call this man Barbatos. Barbatos. Not a fan of that pronunciation. That, that, I'm not calling him that. That that sounds wrong. How do you say? You say <laughs> that, Barbatos. I say Barbatos because the emphasis is on the bat. Because bat, bat. <laughs> and um, we we're told that Barbatos saw Bruce use his symbol, the symbol of the bat, throughout time, and that's why he wanted to use him as the wagon to uh be in this dimension i think it's a little it's, it's like a it's a little confusing because it's a time travel thing but so it all goes in a circle yeah it's a chicken it's, making it's, the egg it's a chicken making the egg type deal bruce gets lost in time because of what happened in final crisis which is a whole other story we won't get into that just know that he was assumed dead but he was actually lost in time and this is yeah where, he was running from that hyper adapter was uh, that he was running he was uh running from barbados actually. yeah he's yeah. running from barbados but uh it's it's being trapped in time and being in the beginning of history and inspiring the creation of the a bat tribe Right. That ended up having Barbados notice Wayne in the first place, so uh, which caused him to create Batman yeah. you know, further on into the future. I know that's confusing, but he ends up being the actual bat. <laughs> that uh, that yeah, Barbados is the actual bat that crashes into the Bruce Wayne's window at the pivotal moment in his life when he's deciding what to do with himself. Yes, yeah, father. because like I said, anything could have came at that moment. That would have been really scary if it would have been like some kind of gerbil. I would become a squirrel. Yes, father, I shall become a bat. There's actually uh, there was an issue of DC's Doom State, uh, Doom Patrol JLA crossover where uh, there's a universe where Batman. Uh, where a priest crashes in through Batman's window instead of a bat. And he becomes a priest, man? <laughs> he becomes a priest. <laughs> I, is this the Milk Wars? Yes, it's the Milk Wars. I saw that. I was like, what is going on on there? I was like, this is very interesting, but I have no idea what's going on. I, I have to check that out. It's weird. Um, What about the crossovers? What I mean, uh, or the, the, the side books that, that that took place here? We got to finish out the um Dark Knights of the Multiverse. Yeah, we got all the Dark Knights got their own one shots. Everyone gets their uh, origin explained to how those Batman became how uh, who they are. We we lost a member we, of the Dark Knights of the Multiverse with um, Red Death choosing to sacrifice himself in that uh, thing. Does that not happen? That happens way later. Oh, doesn't it? Yeah. Doesn't isn't that in the uh, that that's in the Wild Hunt? In the Wild Hunt. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and he is he's. I keep forgetting that these people are not. That these people are Bruce? They are uh, variations of Bruce Wayne. Well, yeah, they're all created from his hopes and fears, except that they actually exist. These are not just like phantom right. dreams and stuff. These are, uh, they exist on worlds that were created you because know, of these hopes and fears of the main multiverse, of the main Earth in the regular multiverse. That's a great place to start, is the idea that we found out about this World Forge. This place in which, um, so from the beginning of time, you had the monitor and the anon monitor, and uh, yeah, then. Right. And then you go ahead and you have um, the World Forger and the Dragon. Those are two yeah, separate I should, entities, I should, right? Uh, I should point out that this is actually a huge change to DC's mythos. See, for uh, for all these years, we've been led to believe that the universe begins with... Uh, well, Krona, we actually, we right? actually don't know where the universe begins. What we do know is that shortly after the beginning of the universe, Krona, one of the... One of the first spe one of the first sentient species who eventually go on to become the guardians who you know run the Green Lanterns. Yeah. He uh, takes a look into the forbidden past. Takes a look at the beginning of the universe, at how it's created, and he sees the legendary blue hand. You know, the beginning of the universe. Right. Right. And uh, that forbidden act causes the creation of DC's multiverse. So right. Now we find out that. Uh, the monitor and anti monitor, which you've always known about, are not the only two bro not the only two beings that oversee uh DC's yeah, these, new these... multiverse. There's actually a third brother. Would these be considered cosmic beings? Cosmic beings, yeah, yeah that's right? a good way that's a good way to think of them. 
um, so we get the origin story basically of uh, the World Forge and of the Forger. And uh, the Forger's job was a lot to create these worlds. And the good ones he would allow to stay. And the bad ones he would send his dragon to destroy. His that dragon, dragon being Barba- Bar- yes. Barbatos. The, this, this, the World Forger's personal dragon. They didn't. They don't really give much of the... If, as far as knowledge to, about the World Forger, like we get this kind of constellation picture of him, and we know he's dead. I get this feeling that Scott Snyder is going to be uh, fleshing him out right later on because, like, well, we're not going to get into that. Yeah, right. we're going to get into this later on in the podcast. But the end of Metal actually leads to a whole new world of possibilities when it comes to cosmic beings and things like that. In right, DC's exactly. Universe. So I'm thinking that this stuff is going to get fleshed out later on down the line. So. After Barbatos takes on or destroys the world forger, he allows all these sick and twisted worlds to exist, right? These this, this dark multiverse. He allows all these uh makes it his home. Yeah, all these night nightmare uh versions of Earth are able to exist because the dragon now has killed the forger and is allowing this to happen and when enough of them uh he was able to amass his own army now of dark knights and he's going to use them to uh end the tuning fork. And uh well, he doesn't know about the to get ten King Targaryen. Is that how I'm saying that right? Thanagarian. 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 Ah, I gotta be a better diplomat. <laughs> uh, Thanagarian. He doesn't know about the Thanagarian gun. I'm no, assuming the Thanagarians have created this. Uh, what did they call it? A po- polarizer. Uh, what, what it was, was some kind of cool. It was. They gave it a weird name, but basically, it's a huge cannon at the base of their planet that is aimed directly towards Earth at all times. It never changes. <laughs> yeah, just it in never case. changes position, just in case Barbados's uh, millennia-long plan to raise the dark multiverse or to sink the regular multiverse into the dark multiverse uh, ever comes to pass. The Earth is the center of the multiverse, so all they would have to do is to raise the Earth back. To where it belongs, and then everything will be fine. But as we found out, uh, everything is not that simple. But actually, we got a couple more things to get into before we before we move on because I don't want to confuse you guys. Oh yeah. At the end of issue three, Superman was tricked into entering the dark multiverse. Yes, he was. And because it turns out he's the actual battery for uh, Barbados's huge. I want to say battery, but then there's no machine. So. <laughs> um, were you surprised at the? Uh, amount of batman we got in in these stories considering i mean like it looked very much like a batman story but for the most part up until what issue five batman's nowhere near majority of the action well the main batman is the main our yeah our batman is we got like 18 of them running around i guess that's true right so you can spread you can spread the love (laughs) you can spread the love well it's definitely a bad story but at the same time uh we're in all corners of the dc universe right now we're gonna see how all how all of the universe reacts to this yeah, as, uh, as Superman was tricked into the Dark Multiverse, the rest of the Justice League is collecting the nth metal that they can find in our universe, which is very little. Because... Which is something we also found out in the Gotham Resistance. Um, am I mistaken? That there were uh, armories of of metal yes. um, that the Court of Owls would hoard yes. in various locations. That was found by Damien and, um, and the Green Arrow. And they were able to find out that not only were these metals... Um, extremely you know potent but they can hurt the dark knights of the multiverse yes uh because one of the robins was stabbed with an arrow and he one died. of those nasty little robins the that crows? belong to Should the I bat- call them crows to the batman who laughs uh, that's a that, that's a good name for them crows yeah the crows crow bar yeah they, uh, that was that was <laughs> kind of sick so um we have batman in the dark multiverse and and we got to see with batman lost um and a little bit from one of the earlier issues what this revolving nightmare, you know, um, scenario is where you're replaying the worst parts of yourself. And we even get a cool little moment where Superman is looking at the nightmare versions of himself, you know, and they're they're trying to pull him darker into the into the uh, abyss. Every, every, at every point in these, these stories, we're constantly being reminded that all the roads lead back to darkness and that it's all so easy to be drugged down into the dark. But uh, I should point out that um, when you're trapped in a dark multiverse or... <clears throat> Whatever part of the dark multiverse Batman and Superman are actually trapped in, it doesn't seem like they're on any Earth in particular. Maybe they're in the dark multiverse orrery. Yeah, yeah, but, because uh, they are. Um, it, it doesn't seem like anything where we've seen actual planets. We've yeah, seen we've seen that there's Earths in this. There are planets in this dark multiverse, right? There are buildings, dark streets, universes, stuff in this like dark that. Yeah, that. But wherever they are, time is passing at a much faster rate than it is in real life because 
Bruce is aged. Yeah, so it's Clark. Way, almost. <laughs> like, uh, he's all, he looks near death. And then the same thing happens to Superman pretty quickly. They were able to kind of get out of that situation using... But they are uh, able to get out of that situation using... Uh, actually using one of Superman's nightmares, which is that one day he's going to kill Batman and he's going to like it and he's going to take his mantle. Yep. So uh, within that fear that Superman would have been using Batman's Batcave, so he would be having access to one of all of Batman's weapons, which is what he will be using. So Bruce recognizes what this Nightmare Superman is wearing, which is a glove called the Five Finger Death Punch, which has yes. about five different types of kryptonite attached to each knuckle. <laughs> now, so, so many questions, right? Like, <laughs> a lot of questions. A lot of questions. Where did he... Well, does this thing really exist? Yes, it, it does. does really it, exist. It, just his acknowledgement of that says that he actually has one in his back cave. Okay. So, but, and he, <laughs> but because of where he's at right now, he's just he's able to just produce it. He's a, that means that Superman also knows that he has one. Oh, okay, he was right. Able to fear to, that one and day he will materialize that fear in the dark uh, multiverse. Yes. Yeah, because I was like, he's just been holding this down. Okay, yeah, I get, <laughs> I, I get it. We've seen what the effects of different kinds of kryptonite can do, especially in that Batman Who yeah, Laughs story. Yeah, I think story. he, uh, he actually. He actually points out he has every color kryptonite from gold to periwinkle. I think one of them makes you sparkle. Oh, that's a little nice <laughs> Another little jab. one makes your flesh dissolve. That's <laughs> a nice little jab. And at every turn when we're going through these stories, there's so many Easter eggs to the actual DC universe or to past issues, like the joke of, of what, what color kryptonite does what to Superman. It's a constant running joke that d- uh, different colors have different effects. Um, How do you feel about the team up and their ability to get out of the dark multiverse? Actually, or I guess... Uh, I thought it was pretty brilliant the way they did, uh, the way Bruce did what he did. But as we saw in issue, was it issue one at the end of issue one of Metal, where uh, we're introduced to the second Sandman? Uh, oh, yes. Daniel Hall. We're not right. introduced to him, but we're introduced to him in this story. Yes. And uh, he tells Bruce to call out his name when he needs his help. And now here we are in the fourth issue where he needs this, his help. This is the first, you you were saying like um, we were introduced, it's because it is an introduction to this um, line of comics, this rebirth line of comics um, to Dream. When was the last time he was acknowledged? Because I don't even remember him really being acknowledged in New 52. The Sandman characters exist in the DC universe, but they very rarely cross over. Like, I think there right. was an issue of Action Comics a couple of years ago where, like, Dream, where Death and Lex Luthor had an interaction. Okay. But, uh, uh, like, Sandman uh, was, like, the original Sandman was at Superman's funeral. Right. Like, they, like it's always there are small crossovers or small interactions. This is the first time, I, I think, you know, well, at least in my reading, <laughs> this is enjoy? the first time that I've seen. Um, dream. not just any Sandman character. We're talking about Dream. Yeah, complete, just complete, just uh, have a huge part in a DC story, like a straight up superhero story. So that's pretty cool. Uh, he asks for the help, and he's able to get. Yeah, Dream pulls them out of the dark multiverse and into his dimension. His night, uh, to the dreaming. Yes, <laughs> because he is Daniel, the Lord Shaper, the Dream Weaver, the King of Daniel, the Hulk. Riddle Realm. That's Grandson probably my favorite one of Hawkman. That's why I'm missing right now. Oh, this is true. This yes. is my favorite. Uh, I love that he is the King of the Riddle Realm. That is say that five times fast. But um, he explains that there's a, there's a library full of books and um with, with all the possibilities, every story that's ever been written, and that there's a certain uh bunch of books. Uh, in Lucien's library, am I saying that right? Lucien. Lucien's library uh, that are made from the horrors of the human heart and Should that with right everything now. that Barbados is doing to the actual reality is causing that stack of books to catch fire. So Dream is now, like, everybody from every corner of the DC universe is pulled into this. Everyone is paying attention right now because Barbados is doing something that no one has ever seen before. The ability to plunge the Earth into the dark multiverse has never been threatened before. We didn't even know there was a dark multiverse. So now all hands are on deck and everyone's paying attention. And it's up to these heroes who seemingly are facing something they've never faced before uh, to do this. Dream is able to give them a nice little uh, backstory of of Barbados because we all got the story of Barbados. I thought this was very interesting too. We all got the story of Barbatos and the Dark Knights, um, but Batman wasn't around for that. Batman was in the Dark Multiverse, so he has to then be told separately about okay that he has a thing, an army called the Dark Knights. Barbatos is trying to do this, so he gets all that information from Dream. Um, yeah. So and- while uh, so while Dream is uh, explaining to explaining the origin of Barbatos, uh, not just Barbatos but the Dark Multiverse itself. Yep. Uh, we are given a look at where the for separate league groups. Well, I don't want to call them league groups because there's a mishmash of yeah. these all heroes from around the DC universe trying to get, trying to find Nth Metal. 
We also have that scene in the Oblivion Bar where we show how how bad things have gotten. Everyone is tired. Everyone is hungry. Everyone is um, tired of fighting these hordes and hordes of, of monstrosities and nightmares. And the ones that see, that are seemingly left are trying to do their best as well. We uh, they, He said Wonder Woman to Rock of, the, of Eternity, right? Yeah, that right now, you got Wonder Woman at the Rock of Eternity, uh, the center of this multiverse. No Shazam, though. No Shazam. Shazam has actually been missing in Rebirth for a while now. I don't, I'm not sure that they've even shown him in DC's Rebirth. Crazy, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's a reason for that because here we are at the Rock of Eternity, sent here by... Uh, well, we weren't sent here by Shazam. Actually, in the beginning of Metal Week, we were shown that group of immortals, like uh, as you recall. Yeah, it was one of uh, them. Like was, Roz. Yeah, we had Rare Shao Kool, who called himself the youngest. Yeah. The group. And then, as uh, the youngest, I'd <laughs> like to say. And uh, one of those immortals was Shazam. So, yes. Uh, yeah, who provided Hawkwoman with, with the, the dagger, right? With the dagger made of nth metal. Ah, yes. there you go. There you go. So, I mean, they got to be setting up. They're setting up for that. So, yeah, we made our way here to the center of the multiverse, the Rock of Eternity. They're being attacked by the protectors, which is strange because they were sent here. They've been given permission to be here. So, why? Are they being attacked? Oh, and they state that. They're like, oh, this is kind of weird. Something's <laughs> wrong here. Wonder Woman doesn't seem to, to sweat, though. She's like, well, they, if they're attacking us, then we have to attack them. We yeah. have a mission to do, and I don't I don't care why they're attacking us. Play first, us. ask questions later. Definitely. Uh, same time, we're shown Aquaman and Deathstroke in Atlantis, in the depths of Atlantis, in what looks like a hidden place that Aquaman has never been to. And Aquaman is being very closed off about this whole situation. He even had to kind of get yelled at to show, because he was like... I, Atlantis has secrets that I don't want people to know. Yeah, it was a tomb of uh, it was a tomb of somebody really important. I uh, want to say it was uh, the first Atlantean king. Uh, I love I love that they get some of the information from a fish. Yeah, Atlantis is from. There's just like there's a f- I, I, the there speech was... bubble pop, popped up and I'm like what what's talking and I look and it's like a guppy. It is. It's a small fish. There was that's one I want to point out. One of the things about metal is that it's really epic in scope and a lot of crazy things are happening and, and there's explosions and multiverses being sunk in, but. There's a, there's there's a bit of a humor to it too, yeah, and not in the, not in that characters are joking here and there, but in just like situations like Aquaman speaking to this little baby fish here. Yeah, and, and, the, ba- and the fish is like my liege. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> He's like you are you are a strong soldier. Don't worry. Oh, he was struck blind. I remember. He was like I couldn't see anything. I was struck blind. Uh, but you have these teams out there. Terrifics with uh Green Lantern. They are on Thanagar Prime. A uh, 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 a world in Thanagar's uh armada of worlds that the Green Lantern didn't even know about. So he's questioning that. But how could, how and the, could I not well, know about this? Yeah, I'm a lantern. We he know is everything. a freaking space cop and there's an entire you know, area that he had no idea about. Um, we go there and uh, to Thanagar basically to beg for all the metal that they have so we can so we can fight Barbatos and th- that's when they say what we were stating. That, oh no, uh, we don't plan to give you any help. We, As a matter if fact, it, uh, <laughs> The person who rules Thanagar right now with the help of Starro. Yes, the Starro, the OG uh, uh, Justice League villain. Yeah, the reason for the Justice League coming together at one point. Well, I don't know if that's still the reason now. No, history has been changed at least three, four times. At Uh, least. Dark side's the reason now. Um, But as I was saying, the person who's running Thanagar right now with the help of Starro, Ominar Sin, ate all the nth metal. Ah, <laughs> well, it, that's he, how you get rid of it. It's all inside of him, so they're not going to be getting any help. As a matter of fact, they're going to be fighting Starro. Yeah, and we're going to shoot this we're cannon. Gonna, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna throw you into prison here, and you're gonna leave us alone while we make sure your Earth doesn't get sunk in any deeper than it already is. Starro, I can't say he's being uncharacteristic here. I'm not really much. I don't know much about Starro, but he seems to be like joking. He's he's like, hey, you idiots. <laughs> he's uh, he's all yeah. He's like very uh, like nin- ninja turtle. He's almost. definitely different now. I guess you could put that. You you can uh, you can attest that to him being destroyed and growing himself back from a piece of tentacle. Is that just Zach? I mean, Zach Scott just um, going full silly with a silly character. Absolutely, like, he's, he's, my, done come, it, uh, he's done it a couple times in metal already. I think <laughs> it's a freaking starfish. It's let's you know, um, it's cool though. All, all the is- Easter eggs because it, it shows you the stories and stuff that DC and Scott Snyder respect. Um, the characters that they respect, the, the ones that the storylines that they want. Um, yeah, and- metal metal has been really good about about uh, reaching into DC's past and and, and and referencing things that we didn't know were still part of continuity or exactly. And you don't you don't have to get everything to get the story, but the more that you know, like I said, all these are are 
cool little um, Easter eggs. As it, as is with most comics, the more that you know, the the better you'll enjoy the story. But uh, they're at Thanagar. Thanagar? I'm saying yeah, Thanagar Prime. Yeah, uh, Starro is threatening to, to beat people up. He's actually able to, in his, you know, um, cool kind of way, stop the stop the ability of of the Green Lantern to have a train of thought. Yeah, he slowed his frontal synapses so he can't keep a train of thought. So he would like legit try to sit there and think of a uh, a construct, and instead just to have his mind trail off. So he's of he's of no use. And Mister Terrific, I don't think he has any T spears. It's actually really this is actually really relatable because if uh, people that people that uh, I want to say abuse marijuana yes. sometimes right. can, can deal with the same exact situation where we can't keep a train of thought going. Ah. <laughs> you see, so that it might be hard to be a stoner and a Green Lantern. I don't think I'd be able to be a Green Lantern. Let's move on. But Kendra's flipping out. Kendra is uh, yes. flipping out. The Kendra reason... Saunders, Lady Blackhawk. This is the Blackhawks from All-Star, right? Yes, the same Blackhawks. Right. Which is uh, All-Star was part of the lead-in into metal. Yes. Uh, actually... Yeah. So as we mentioned earlier, they were being they were the the group at the Rock of Eternity was being attacked by the protectors of the Rock of Eternity and they couldn't figure out why when they were sent here so they had permission to be here from Shazam. As it turns out, it's because Kendra, Hawk Woman, or formerly Hawk Woman, she says yeah. she cut off she cut off her wings. Yes, I I got rid of them. He was like, I got rid of them or something like that. I, I can't remember what the exact verbiage of Yeah, she was got to, rid of her uh, wings because she kept hearing the that. call to the dark. And yeah. she didn't want anything to do with that. So here she is with her own secret plan that was enacted. What well, that was she was sent here for by the immortals. Right. She, I laugh because of the absurdity, but the it's oh yes, she has the anti monitor's astral brain in compressed form, which is pure antimatter. Right. Okay. The, I thought she, I thought it was kind of weird how they stated that they're like. Is that what I think it is? Is that the compressed form of the? I was like, that's very on the nose. Like you, 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 you knew. I would once I they would, whooped that out. With that, she would whoop that. She would whoop that brain out. I would. That would not have been my guess. I would attest that to it being Naboo that mentioned it. So he's got a he's got a deeper knowledge than most people in the DC universe. Ah, that makes sense. But um, yeah. So it's anti monitors astral brain in compressed physical form, and they're going to take this antimatter this dark energy and they're going to touch the center of the multiverse with it which uh well it's supposed to blow up all the dark multiverse it's supposed to just completely get rid of the dark multiverse which would be a she, problem well except, she thinks uh, it's gonna equal out she thinks it's gonna it's going to just plunge the dark multiverse but uh dr fate says you don't know that it's gonna do that antimatter and matter together it could destroy all the universes exactly and so you don't really know about this, and you still want to do it. And so she's still motivated to do it. The only thing that stops her from doing it is she sprouts she's, metal wings? Yeah, she's basically a sleeper agent for Barbados. And right before she can enact her plan, her sleepy cells, her, she's awoken. Yeah. So she sprouts these metal wings, or what they, what looks like metal wings, because they, they tore through they her back. They stabbed out of her. Yeah, they stabbed out of her. Everywhere. It's, it's greco Pulo style disgusting. And... <laughs> And she is now what is it, Lady Blackhawk? Yes, what, what, what I am also? Lady Blackhawk. Yeah, and know. and all roads, if you didn't hear, all roads lead to darkness. All roads lead to <laughs> darkness in every issue of metal. Yep, but uh, she's able to get some help from Black Adam. So now Black Adam and Lady, uh, yeah, Lady surprise, Blackhawk. Surprise, Black Adam, another one of what was he at the meeting of Immortals? Because I don't think he's actually immortal. He's just been around for a long time. I don't think he was at the meeting of Immortals, but he know, he knows. He found out about this. Yeah. Um, He's made a deal with he Barbados. Says, he says Vandal Savage and him have made a deal, which yes. makes sense because Vandal was at the... Vandal at the, Savage, uh, who will be running the League of... Uh, the, Le the Legion of Doom, ah. actually, after this. As, that was like that. As we saw in the first issue of Metal, he was building that new uh, Legion of Doom headquarters. That happened in, in, um, in uh, Doom, right? That that animated movie where he... the Basically, the animated version of the Tower of Babel. Yes. It's Vandal Savage that, Vandal figures, Savage all, that figures all that out. Um, so... Wonder Woman is now facing off again. Black Adam, like what? He explodes? Dr. Fate? Like, Dr. Fate's mask is just there smoking? It did look like... I, I was confused for a second. I thought he was dead. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> what happened there? Because you don't see him after that. Oh, no, you see him later. Later. Yeah, randomly. So they didn't explain how he... Well, originally... He was like, you're on your own, Diana. <laughs> if, if he was just teleported somewhere... 
because this lightning that has multi-purpose lightning it doesn't just burn you well so we don't know exactly what happened to fate but we do see him later on so we know he's alive but he was taken out of the fight so now it's just wonder woman black adam and lady black hawk formerly Kendra Saunders. Yes, and uh, Black Hawk and Black Adam are on the side of darkness, Wolf and Wonder, Wonder Woman is there without her tri- her Trinity, or without her team. No, she's alone. But uh, I want to say, I don't, I don't want to spoil because we have to. As oh yes, podcast, yes, yes, we yes. have to. We have to keep a certain. It's foreplay. You have to get. You have to get to the moment. You have to build up the moments. And so while Diana seems to be there by herself, uh, we see that Dream have, has left. Superman and Batman at the world, the Forge Worlds, basically explaining, "Hey, get there. If it's all dark, then yeah, as, you're screwed." Uh, as they were, <laughs> as they were actually led to believe that there are nine metals in the DC, in the DC universe. But as Dream Only explained nine. to them, the Forge of Worlds has the uh, element. It's called Element X. Yes, or the tenth or, or tenth metal. metal. And this is the metal of creation, the metal that's used. To all possibility. All possibilities. So they are sent here to attain Element X, get some tenth metal, bring it back to the main multiverse, and use it to uh, get their ship back. But it said at several points, "Hey, if you get there and it's dark, ain't gonna be no metal there. Yeah, if it's you get over. there and the forge is dark, you're screwed." So they got there and the forge was dark. The forge was dark, <laughs> <laughs> and, and uh, they're like, "Oh, well, this is all, it's all over." So and they think they're they think they're, they're alone. Gre- they're greeted by the missing, by by the formerly missing Hawkman, who's now just like Kendra. Uh, but like a kaiju uh, Hawkman, right? Like a, like a nasty giant monster he's, version of Hawkman. He's huge. He has he has actual talons Ooh. for feet. His eyes are blazing with fl- with fire, and he is now the the forger. Yes, it, the he's, dragon. He is now the for the, the dragon of the forger. He's, yes, he's taken Barbados's old mantle, but uh, not by choice, by force, of course. Uh, we find out in Hawkman found that he's um he. Well, we found out throughout the story that basically Carter Hall uh, was tracking the metal to the dark multiverse, and his curiosity of him being a, a you know explorer, explorer, um, got him trapped here, and he's been used as uh, he's been used as a dragon of Barbatos ever since, and and he's fighting his own mental battles while in this dark multiverse, the same way Bruce was, the same way um, that Superman was. So he's fighting evil versions of himself. He sees versions of himself where he is flying uh, and then falls back down to the ground. Like, it's the same um, day occurring over and over. It's actually a play on Hawkman's actual history where, right, like... Hawkman is not a character you can just follow line- like with a linear story. He's been through so he's been reincarnated, his character's been changed, he's been a savage, he has been an, a- been an, ancient, for an ancient Egyptian prince. Now he is a an immortal that's been here since the beginning of time. So the him being confused about his own origins is it's 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 a play on us being confused about his origins. Yeah. But they do but they this is a concentrated effort to bring him yes. to the multiverse or yeah. to the universe. There's a concentrated effort to streamline his story and make him important again. Yeah, you kinda sorta have to. And in a in a situation where Barbados has all these dark knights of the multiverse, we don't really need more um villains, but we have them. These superheroes like uh Black Adam and Shazam are, are have picked Barbados aside, turn around and Hawkman's there, turn around and uh uh, Kendra becomes Lady Black Hawk. So not only are they constantly being told that all, ro- all these roads are going to lead to darkness, they're being shown people being corrupted at, at various turns and used against them. Um, so we have to go find out what's going on with everybody. If that's what's going on in Dark Forge, we have to find out what's going on with everybody else. And it seems uh, like Batman is there with soups, kind of kind of trying to not get killed by... he. Yeah, humongous so Hawkman with a hammer. Yeah, so now he's swinging his huge Hawk hammer around uh, Bruce and uh, Bruce and Clark are like dodging, jumping from, which is actually pretty cool because as they're as they're thinking, and as they're having emotions, uh, actual places are being created. Yeah, things are materializing. Things in are the, materializing in the like universe. A crime alley or or a disgusting version of Superman's farm lawn. Uh, <laughs> it, are, are these the hints that uh, of the middle possibility? Uh, these... The Medal of Possibility, yeah. They see the 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 entire multiverse is created from the hopes and fears of of uh, everyone, right? Of everyone on the well, I want to say on the main Earth because uh, the main Earth Zero is the center, and then everything ripples from there. Yeah. So uh, the the rest of the multiverse is built on that. Yeah, and so 
we see them figuring that out. Meanwhile, Barbatos has uh, climbed the tuning fork. Yeah, he's just kind of perched on top of the tuning fork like a bat. I also think that's the first time we see the uh, Joker dragons. Joker dragons, my favorite part of this whole story. They don't have anything to do with anything usually, but they are fuck. They they are great. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking. No, a good way to catch yourself. I was thinking that uh, at, when I finished, I was like, oh well. They never really explain them. They just exist. They're just beings that exist. They're um, just Joker dragons. Who knows what that they look have like? A man that Batman knows. With the actual origin of the Joker, or the same way that Barbados had to do with Batman's origin. Right, and you see, uh, oh, I shall become a dragon. I get it. Oh, and then Joker gets a dragon tattooed on his back. It go. all goes full circle. Super consciousness. That's, that's how. See, I get it. I get it. I get it. Uh, Barbados is climbing the top of the tuning fork because he says that he is able to just plunge the Earth into the dark multiverse with his voice. Uh, no, when the Earth is plunged into the Dark Multiverse, Barbados will call the armies out. With oh, the Mar... Yeah, that's what it was. It was the Army of Nightmares. Uh, uh, yes. I with kinda, his voice. It's just like a bunch of nasty-looking versions of DC's heroes. It's the greatest thing ever. Um, but everyone seems to think that we have more time. You get, uh... I was gonna say Prometheus. Why was I gonna say Prometheus? You get Deathstroke and Aquaman... At the center of the Earth, because they followed their that uh, hole that yeah, they, they found in Atlantis. Yeah, they that hole, and it led to the center of the Earth, where people shouldn't be able to stand, and but they realized there. that, but apparently... And there's, and there's tools there? Yeah, apparently people have been here before. They have, uh, they, they've built this, this, this uh, I want to call it a, a rigging. They've rigged the center of the Earth to where people can actually stand there and not be melted by the core, and they were doing this. Well... They were... It, it seems like it was a... A hybrid effort from Atlanta. Uh, <laughs> Atlanta. Atlanta. <laughs> no, nobody wants to work with Atlanta. Now, Georgia had nothing to do with this. The of the Earth. No, <laughs> it's a hybrid effort of Atlantis and someone else who isn't explained. Yeah. Oh, but I think that was put in there to say that there's things going on in Atlantis that Homeboy doesn't know about. Yeah, to say that Aquaman doesn't know his own history. And then Black Manta comes out like, hey, I know more history than you do. Oh, yeah. It's like, who doesn't? Uh. <laughs> We go to Thanagar. We go to Thanagar. And uh, Green Lantern is there in Thanagarian prison. Yeah, still unable to uh, still unable to come up with a train of thought. And he's there with uh, Mr. Terrific. Mr. Terrific's like, oh, come on, man. It'll be, it's it's going to be all right. Yeah, so he's explaining to Green Lantern why we can't just escape this place and leave Plastic Egg, Plastic Man Egg, Plastic Egg Man. I did like this. So Plastic Man... Uh, his origins have to do with him falling into a vat. That yeah, had so we got some another chemical on here. Right, they they do this specifically for this rebirth. Um, that the metals that were in the, I guess, the liquid that affected Plastic Man were part of these rare metals, and so he is basically his by entire body is a conduit for this stuff. And every pull, every push of the Dark Multiverse, he he can feel it eternally. And he can he's haunted by the nightmares and, and the call of Barbatos. Everything is calling to him to, to act. And he's so scared of what he might do that he just kinda Yeah, he closed himself off. Yeah, he closed himself Literally. off into an egg form. And figuratively. And they've just been carrying him around. Yeah, so uh their their conversation about Plastic Man is interrupted by one of the Therangarian guards who says, you know, uh you guys should shut up. Let me show you something. Hey, yeah. It's the Martian Manhunter. Who's it's been missing? From it's John Jones. DC He's universe. here in the rebirth. Last time I saw him, I wasn't wanna... it when they were talking about him being on the team, on the Justice League, they had to kick him out or something? It was about a year, maybe, right just before rebirth started. And uh, uh, after that, he's been missing. He explains that that is because he has been undercover. I've been here. <laughs> on Thanagar Prime trying to, uh, trying to find the origin of the energy that comes from... I thought that was kind of cool. I mean, if you, can't, if you didn't have a real you know, nuts and bolts uh, reason for him not to be around, then might as well say he's at the place that we didn't know existed. So that's a good reason. Do you see that he transforms his finger into a key? That was pretty sick. <laughs> that, that was pretty cool. Martian Manhunter, you know, telepath. Laser eye vision, um, uh, shapeshifter, definitely a good person to have on your team and definitely a good person to have on your team now because it's getting pretty uh, desperate, especially for Diana, who's trying to take on Black Adam. Yeah, so she's trying to take on Black Adam and Lady Blackhawk on her own. And it's not going too well for her until she crashes into a wall and she notices something she's behind like, her. Hmm. It turns out that's uh, Carter Hall's mace. They also need this mace, mace, right? Yeah, this is they what were they looking came. For this this as well. is why they came here, looking for nth metal and the source of the energy. Turns out to be Carter Hall's mace. 
And so she, with this nth metal, she sees a glimmer of hope because these things have stopped people before. And she takes this mace and smashes it across the face of Black Adam. She smashed him completely. He's got lightning blood coming out of his eyes. To <laughs> lightning blood. <laughs> he's bleeding lightning out of his eyes. And then he's bleeding regular blood. Yes. Right. And uh, he's, he's, he's taken out. They're away from Lady Blackhawk, and uh, Diana takes this moment to just be happy to have found this new metal, and we hear a gunshot. When we look, Diana is face down in the ground, and the Batman who laughs is there with, with a gun, now, should, and the gun is loaded with nth metal. The, I should point out that while this is happening, while Wonder Woman is being attacked by the Batman who laughs, the Superman and Batman are still at the world at the, at the Forge of Worlds. Uh, trying to well they're trying to just escape hawkman now there's nothing looking there's nothing here for them until they notice a spark well yeah uh they 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 notice that hawkman doesn't really like to be referred to as hawkman and he doesn't even like to be referred to as carter hall he's acting as if that part of his uh existence never never happened and so batman does his best job to troll him yeah, so they basically, basically just he, throws him into a, re, a response. Basically trying to get an emotional response from Carter, who seems to have lost himself. He's a good so they big turkey. <laughs> until they started mentioning his name, and he's like, I'm not Carter Hall. So obviously he's got some connection there that he's actively trying to sever, yes. but can't. And while that's going on, as I mentioned, a spark has a spark has shown up in the darkened world forge. Hope. Yes, which means that medals of possibility can be uh, uh, taken taken from the World Forge, and th- that's big because that was the entire reason that they were sent here. And it seemingly like the hope was lost, but you know, with DC, hope is never lost, yeah. except for when you get shot in the head with Ant Metal and the yeah. Batman who last stands above your yeah, hope is body. never lost until they snatch it away from you, which they just did, and they do in this issue the way this ends because so. uh, Batman who laughs says that he has this gun loaded with Ant Metal. I thought like, what what happened? Did he just shoot her? He like did, just shot, she shot did. her, it hit her skull, and then it just fell out. Well, <laughs> like well, it's not gonna penetrate. It's not gonna. There's not gonna be no blood in her head. So it's just basically like getting knocked over the head. Oh, like with a bat. bat. Yeah. Gotcha. That makes sense with Batman. But um, he sits there and he does his villain villain monologue about how um, they're it, it's about time. They're about ready to call the dark armies forth. Um, and that's when all the hope, like you said, all the hopes are to to dwindle because. Not only is um, because this this it it was all a plan. Yeah, not only is Wonder Woman not only is Wonder Woman having to deal with the newly turned uh, Lady Blackhawk and Black Adam, and now the Batman who laughs, but uh, Aquaman and Deathstroke are attacked by Black Manta. Yeah, see, as it turns out, the group of the the, the four separate groups that were searching the universe for Anth Metal were uh, they were tricked into into taking this little into this taking this little journey here. They, they this wasn't of their own volition, even though they thought it was. Yep. No, they, they planned just, every inch of this. Yeah, they were just doing the hard work for the Dark Knights and for Barbados. So now that the hard work is done, now that they have found all the nth metal, uh, that all the readily available nth metal in the DC right, universe, right. the Dark Knights are here to take advantage. And there, are, there's fights on all fronts. There's fights uh, in Thanagar. There's fights uh, at the center yeah, of the Earth. Yeah, all four fronts. The Dark Knights have it all taken care of. Uh, I think uh, on Thanagar Prime, we've got the Destroyer, we've got the Dawnbreaker, and we've got the Merciless. And uh, back on, back with uh, Aquaman and Deathstroke, they were just attacked by Black Manta, Red Death, uh, Water Chick. Who's uh, <laughs> the Drowned. The Drowned, whose story sucked. Not a fan. I, not a fan. In, in my opinion. There was the book. You barely saw her as Batman in that story. Like her, her Batman prior to like, drowning. Was it that she was always Bryce Wayne? Or like, <laughs> did she get a Wayne. sex change? That's like, terrible. That? Bryce Wayne is right. just horrible. Um, oh, no, because it's negative Earth 11, and Earth 11 is the Earth where all, all the, the, well, the females. Like, yeah, yeah, because they showed, the, they showed the female Aquaman. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Uh, so, you got half of the Dark Knights there dealing with Aquaman and Deathstroke. You got the other half of the Dark Knights uh, dealing with on the Danagar. guys on Thanagar. Yeah, on Thanagar Prime. They, uh, See, as it turns out, the Green Lantern, uh, Michael Holt, and Martian Manhunter were going to use the huge cannon we mentioned earlier to raise the Earth from the dark, from where it is right now. But uh, they needed Plastic Man to power the cannon. So they yes. stuck Plastic Man in the little battery hole, and <laughs> Lantern notices, hey, someone's, yeah, the- reversed the pull- someone's reversed this entire machine. Yeah, this it's is not, not aiming gonna, where it's not going to raise anything. It's going to sink. 
And then boom. Boom. Black, yeah, the Dark Knights are here. Yeah, like, yeah. You're damn right. We're going to see. exactly sink. what's going to happen. Thanks for setting this all up Thank for us. Thank you. Um, Thank you very much because we're going to fire this cannon. And then they did. They it's exactly what they do. They fired that cannon. They sunk the earth into the dark multiverse. They have won. The only uh, people seemingly yeah. uh, left to fight are all trapped. They're all they're all cornered. And we go back to Wonder Woman, who's dealing with the Batman who laughs, who's still talking, right? Wonder Woman, the Batman who laughs, loves yeah, Batman to... who laughs. You know, Bruce, like, like, let's not lie. You know, Batman likes to monologue. He does. Joker he does. likes to monologue. So a Batman, who is who's basically the Joker, who this has got to be his hobby. It's hard for me to remember that he is a alternate version of Batman and not an alternate version of Joker. In my head, I hear the Kevin Conroy voice with a really? laugh. Really? Yeah, it's that's got to be creepy it's as hell. Really weird. It's nasty, and I want to hear it in real life. <laughs> <laughs> but she, he basically says, you know, you guys are. It's all done. Yeah, I he, we did everything we wanted to do. He's explaining to them how they have done his work for him, and this is how it's going to go down. And you have lost. Enjoy, they your, leave, enjoy the end of your life. They leave uh, Lady Blackhawk to take care of Wonder Woman, but Wonder Woman has had enough. She wraps the lasso of truth around her <laughs> fist and punches Kendra Saunders in the face. Just straight punch the truth out of her. Why even ever lasso someone of truth? Put that on your fist and just punch people in the face. That is just, that's the way to go with everything. You know, and so uh, we find out that, uh, well, we don't find out anything. She informs Kendra that you are Kendra Saunders, and I guess the lasso of truth helped her see that. Yes, and now that she's back, she says, let's go back to Earth. And then she's like, then when they see Earth, they see that it is Barbados is plunged. Army. Yeah. It is plunged into the darkness, and weird, twisted, nightmare versions of all the all your superheroes and villains are on this Earth, just ready to attack any of the good, any of the light that Wonder Woman and now Lady Blackhawk represent. Um, yeah. While in the meantime... So, it, uh, Bruce and 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 Soups are yeah, Bruce, turning into soup. Bruce and Clark, that spark of light that they saw, has actually darkened again. So the hope, the little bit of hope that they got, is gone, and that's because, as uh, my partner here mentioned, the Earth now exists inside of the dark multiverse. Yes. So it's pretty much they've lost. They've lost. And, then and th- those nice... guys themselves are plunged into the molten metal. Well, yeah, they're 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 plunged into the to the element X, but I mean, it's just molten lava, right? Yeah, right. But like, not really lava. I was thinking that too because they were they like they're, they're very chill about it. They're like, yeah, it's the end, bro. <laughs> and I'm yeah, like, so hey, you're in lava. Uh, but so yeah, the library's on fire. We get this nice little shot of Wonder Woman and Hawk Woman just kind of. Oh, that's my favorite part. To tell you the truth, it's one of my favorite parts of this whole issue is the fact that being into what they think is their death. Yeah, the death. fact that these women, especially Wonder Woman. There's no hope. You know, she's fought this battle almost on her own for the last couple of issues. And she's been betrayed. She's been shot. She's been, you know, uh, monologued to death. And she's over it. But she, in her character, like in her character, it's about the battle. It's always about the battle. It's about seeing the battle to its its conclusion. And she is ready. And she jumps through the air. And she says, you know, I want you, when we do this. I want you to scream. I want you to scream so loud that Barbados and Laughing Batman and, and you know, all the other evil people that their eardrums burst. I want people to understand that it's not a scream that we do. It's never going to be a scream. It's it's a war cry. It's a war cry. And I thought that was pretty, pretty damn cool. Shots of Lucian's library burning. Yes. Uh, a lot of these endings are, are pretty dark. And in that instance there, we have... Um, yeah, because we're shown, uh, we're actually shown that they, we, you see, uh, over the course of the last two issues, we we were only shown three of the four groups, right, that were out looking for metal in the multiverse. Uh, the fourth group was Cyborg's group, who was searching the multiverse. Oh yes, and he was also, um, he was so, also now kind here's of... here's where here's where things got a little weird for me. All right, so the next time we see Cyborg, Raven. And Flash, they are on the multiversal ship called the Ultima Thule. Yes. That... Last I checked, this ship was in possession of Nick Wotan, the last of the monitors. Right. Who lives on our Earth, Earth 33, where we live, real life. Is that the monitor we see in 6? No. No. See, uh, well, I guess I'll, like, let me backtrack a little bit. Uh, we were told that at the beginning of time, there's two monitors. Yeah. The anti-monitor, the regular monitor. From then, from that point, a species, a race of monitors, right, came into existence. Uh, recently, <laughs> in the crisis before this one, 
Right. The race of monitors was, uh, uh, they were extinct. This is infinite. This is Final Crisis. Final. Final Crisis. We're left with one. Nixie Wotan. And then uh, in Multiversity, they get attacked by the Gendry. Right. And whatever happens in that story happens. But at the end of it, Nixie Wotan is the last monitor. And he's got possession of the Ultima Thule. The huh. ship that travels the multiverse. So where in the hell did Cyborg get this ship? And why is it never explained? <laughs> Wasn't there a ship kind of like that no, in this in is, um it's even called Superman in Superman? Uh, oh. when they when they were when they were when they were uh when that guy was trying to kill all the Superman across the multiverse. The, the um they had a ship kind of similar, League, right? The Justice League Incarnate. Yeah, yeah. they had a. They Didn't have they have a, a thule? Ship. Like the only way these ships work is by by oh, because the vibrational energy vibrational and music. and music and stuff like that. Yeah, people out here jacking ships, bro. I don't know people, what's going on here. I just want to know what happened to Nick's World Town because then we're shown now that uh the Dark Knights have a hostage. Yes, and this hostage is the original monitor. Specifically the, shown the, in the the, um, the over monitor, the the monitor, the monitor, not a monitor. We're talking about. The monitor from Crisis on Infinite Earths, the one who was betrayed by the Harbinger and dies. The monitor is now reforming. Yes. He was taken hostage because he was reforming, so he wasn't all the way powerful in case you were wondering. How do you take a, ho- a monitor hostage? We That's find that out in uh, the Batman Who Laughs story because he's telling the monitor seemingly this story while while he's wrapped up in bandages. Um, but Barbados has kind of won. Yeah, so they've won. They uh, they've completely won. The Earth is in the dark multiverse now. Uh, the armies of Barbados are running the streets. You see people dragging like the fallen heroes <laughs> around like, and stuff. It's it, it's it's sick. And the only one, the only ones right now out there fighting are Wonder Woman and Wonder Woman Kendra. and Kendra. That's always shown. But I've, I want to I want to I want to I want to say that everyone on Earth. Is doing what they can. Yeah. Did uh, Did you see uh, Scott was able to sneak in his yes, Riddler. Riddler from the first issue of uh, from his first Batman. Yeah. The uh, I keep saying like, wait, we never see, and he's had the chance to write him. He's, we've never seen him like that. He said, uh, "What was it?" He was saying. I think he might have just been talking about this panel. Yeah. He was like, "We're gonna do a panel where we bring it all the way around from the first issue of Batman." And I was like, "Oh, because they never explained what the fuck he what what he was doing in Arkham in Arkham in Arkham fighting yeah. all these villains yeah. that never came that never came to pass. So it was just like, hey, here's the here's the Riddler with a question mark on his head.' And- yeah, we we actually tackled that um, Court of Owls in the last episode. So if you guys uh, want to hear about the f- first issues of Batman and New Fifty Two? We had that all covered here, but we're gonna continue to cover um, metal because Diana is cutting heads off. She's flipping out. She has the mace." Um, and decides to bang the mace against the against her um, gauntlets to call upon the Justice League to activate. Uh, yeah, see, as it turns out, they hadn't realized uh, Wonder Woman's bracelets are made of eighth metal, the stuff of the gods. Yes. The mace, uh, Carter Hall's mace, is made of ninth metal, tenth metal. Um, you bang eighth and ninth metal together, and apparently... It wakes up the Justice League, right? This sound, and apparently it wakes up the Justice League. No, apparently this sound can be heard by everyone. Oh yes, around the world. Yeah. Yes. So she just had to specify who she was talking to. Oh, that's a yeah. It's like um when the Nokia's used to do the chirp. Again. Yeah, it's like superhero boost. There you go. There you go. Superhero boost. Where you at? Um, speaking of boost, hopefully this episode is the boost that each and every one of you at home needed. Just a little boost of energy, some comic book talk. It was a blast covering Dark Knight's Metal, but this is only the beginning. The party continues next week when we finish our full recap and review of Dark Knight's Metal. Yes, Yogi is returning next week to close out all things Dark Knight's Metal right here on the Major Issues Podcast. And if you want to listen to past episodes of the Major Issues Podcast, all you have to do is look us up. You can Google Major Issues Podcast on Google. You can go to Stitcher, Podbean, Google Play. We're available on Apple Podcasts, on iTunes. And if you go to iTunes, don't forget to rate and review us so we can grow as a podcast, grow our audience, and become the greatest and latest thing to come to comic books and comic book media. Because guess what? I've been to the future, and that's exactly what we become. But... It takes you guys at home sharing, liking, and subscribing. We've seen the numbers. The numbers are actually going up. The audience is growing thanks to you guys and thanks to your support. So keep doing what you guys 
are doing at home. And don't forget to go to Facebook.com slash comic book click, Instagram at comic book click, and use the hashtag comic book click to talk about the newest, hottest, latest, and greatest things to come to comic books and comic book media. And don't forget, next week, Yogi returns and we finish Dark Knight's Metal. Woo! I am pumped up. I hope you guys are too. My name is George Serrano, a.k.a. The Don. I was accompanied by the lovely Yogi. This has been just part one of our Dark Knight's Metal finale. We will be here for part two. But regardless, remember that you, yes, you are worthy. <laughs> <laughs>